The Senate overwhelmingly votes to ban pharmacist gag clauses. A study finds the current vaccine pipeline for HIV, tuberculosis, and malaria may fall short. And an expert notes a trend of healthcare cost data seeping into non-healthcare companies' earnings calls. Welcome to This Week in Managed Care, I'm Laura Jost. Late Monday, the Senate passed a bill that is part of the American Patients First Drug Pricing Blueprint. Voting 98 to 2, senators approved to end a gag clause that prevents pharmacists from telling patients if a prescription drug would be cheaper if they paid entirely out of pocket. The bill was sponsored by Democratic Senators Claire McCaskill of Missouri and Debbie Stabenow of Michigan, as well as Republican Senator Susan Collins of Maine. It was opposed by Republican Senators Rand Paul of Kentucky and Mike Lee of Utah. The National Community Pharmacists Association is happy with the outcome of the Senate vote. NCPA cheers the Senate's passage of S-2554, the Patient Right to Know Drug Prices Act, legislation that will prohibit so-called gag clauses in private health plans. In a testimony before the House Energy and Commerce Subcommittee on Health earlier this month, NCPA board member Hugh M. Chansey narrated how his community pharmacy received a verbal warning from a pharmacy benefit manager for telling a customer that a medication could be obtained less expensively if paid for off insurance. He said, The PBM stated we were in violation of our contract for disparaging the plan when we discussed the cost of a drug off insurance. We were told that if our pharmacy were to do so again, there would be consequences, including exclusion from PBM networks. In a statement, America's health insurance plans said that drug prices remain too high and removing the gag rule won't solve the problem of patients being unable to afford their medications. A study that analyzed the research and development pipeline for vaccine candidates has concluded that the existing pipeline is unlikely to produce highly effective vaccines for HIV, tuberculosis, or malaria, which could be important for controlling the spread of these diseases. The authors, led by Dr. Gavin Yamey, believe a lack of funding sources has led to this development. While annual funding for vaccine development hovers around $3 billion, it falls short of what is needed by between $1.5 billion and $2.8 billion. While 128 products would make it to launch, per the study, actual product launches of vaccines for the three diseases would be unlikely. Said Yamey, the model shows us where the current pipeline is most robust and where it is lacking. For global health advocates, this is a broad picture of what pieces we are likely to still be missing and where we can direct priorities in funding and product development. According to AJMC.com contributor Joseph Andelin, healthcare costs in America have found a place in earnings calls of non-healthcare companies, including manufacturers of sports goods and food products and flower delivery companies. Andelin shares healthcare-related statements from earnings calls of several companies, including Hibbert Sports, Foot Locker, and 1-800-Flowers. Oil and Gas Company and Servco Corporation reported that since the company is partially self-insured, it makes a relatively large upfront payment on each claim. For more, visit AJMC.com. To mark National Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month, the American Journal of Managed Care spoke with an ovarian cancer survivor and her gynecologist about the complexities associated with treating the disease in the presence of comorbidities and the vital role of a multidisciplinary care team. You can listen to the podcast by visiting AJMC.com. AJMC's seventh patient-centered oncology care meeting will be held in Philadelphia on November 16th, where panelists will discuss learnings from the oncology care model, data reporting, highlight the pharmacist's role in patient care, and provide insight on the future of value-based payment models. This year, the keynote address will be presented by Dr. Barbara McEnany, president of the American Medical Association. To learn more and to register, visit AJMC.com. For all of us at the Managed Markets News Network, I'm Laura Jost. Thanks for joining us.